warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. The Honorable Rector of Universitas Negeri Malang, UM, Profesor Ahar Udin. The Honorable Dean of the Faculty of Education, Universitas Negeri Malang, UM, Profesor Bambang Budi Wiono. The Honorable Speakers on the Second International Conference on Early Childhood and Primary Education. The Honorable Committee of the Second International Conference on Early Childhood and Primary Education. The Honorable Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, a very good morning to everyone and welcome to the webinar of the Second International Conference on Early Childhood and Primary Education organized by the Early Childhood and Primary Education. The Honorable Committee of the Second International Conference on Early Childhood for your presence. And it is indeed a pleasure to welcome you all here in this webinar for the Second International Conference on Early Childhood and Primary Education. I am Nailul Muna and I will be your host for today's opening ceremony. Honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, now we invite you all to rise in your respective place for the Indonesian National Anthem. It is indeed a pleasure to welcome you all here in this webinar for the second international conference on early childhood and primary education. I am Nailul Muna and I will be your host for today's opening ceremony. Honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, now we invite you all to rise in your respective place for the Indonesian National Anthem. We are honored to have four keynote speakers from few different countries that will be joining us today. Professor Dr. Mariani Binti Matnur from the University of Malaya, Malaysia. Dr. Juraidah Binti Musa from University Brunei Darussalam, Brunei Darussalam. Dr. Sofia Hartati from Universitas Negeri Jakarta, Indonesia. An associate professor, Dr. Kanita Dijarungku from, from Prince of SoundCloud University, Thailand. Ladies and gentlemen, now we would like to invite the head of the committee of the Second International Conference on Early Childhood and Primary Education, Dr. Pramono, to deliver the report for this conference. Dr. Pramono, time is yours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Ladies and gentlemen, now we would like to invite the head of the Committee of the Second International Conference on Early Childhood and Primary Education, Dr. Ramono, to deliver the report for this conference. The Chief of Ministry of the All of the 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 Ministry of the All of
on for enabling to use meet all together in this international conference of the world peace and solution be open to the law everything Robert Islam Muhammad Sallallahu Wasallam and this host and his operation and on his life vital follower until and mid of time the honorable Director of Universitas of Malang, the Honorable the Dean of Faculty of Education, the Honorable the Chairman of KJSP Department. I would like to say thank you very much for the entire committee of the International Conference who have worked hard so to prepare this conference and especially to all the guys of this conference. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you to every, every of one of you for being here today. My name is Pramono. It's such an honor for me to speak on behalf of the organizer. Let me begin by giving you a warm welcome to the International Conference on Early Childhood and Primary Education, ACPE. The theme of this conference is shaping a better future for young generation innovation in early childhood and primary education in new normal era. This conference aim to develop early childhood education and basic education is respond to the current pandemic condition. We invite component speakers from various countries, namely Prof. Dr. Mariani Binti M. Dinur from University of Malaya, Prof. Dr. Juraidah Binti Musa from University of Brunei Darussalam, Dr. Sofia Hatati MSI from State University of Jakarta, Asoc. Prof. Dr. Kanita Najerun School from Prince of Singlah University of Thailand. So far, this conference was attended by approximately 300 people from various countries and regions in Indonesia. Well, I don't want to take much of your time. I need to hand over it to Ms. Naila Muna, our MC today. I would like to say once more on behalf of the conference organizer, welcome. It is great to see all of you here. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. It to Ms. Naila Muna, our MC today. Thank you, Dr. Pramono, for the report. Honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, the second international conference on early childhood and primary education is going to be officially open. Now we would like to play a profile video of the Faculty of Education, Universitas Negeri Malang, UM, prepared by the committee for a few minutes. Thank you, Dr. Pramono, for the report. Honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, the second international conference on early childhood and primary education is going to Fakultas Ilmu Pendidikan merupakan salah satu fakultas unggulan yang menjadi bagian dari Universitas Negeri Malang, The Learning University. Memiliki tiga kampus utama di dua kota yang berbeda. Fakultas Ilmu Pendidikan dipimpin oleh dekan dan dibantu oleh tiga wakil dekan. Ilmu pendidikan saat ini memiliki program studi, jurusan bimbingan dan konseling, jurusan teknologi pendidikan, jurusan administrasi pendidikan, jurusan
jurusan pendidikan luar sekolah. Jurusan kependidikan sekolah dasar dan pra sekolah. Jurusan pendidikan luar biasa. Pendidikan yang terdidik, santun, berbudi pekerti luhur, serta berinovasi dan kreatif bersama FKB akan mewujudkan Insa Indonesia yang cerdas dan berdaya saing. Bersama FKB, ribuan alumni pendidik telah menanti menyebar di seluruh penjuru negeri. Kami percaya ketika kita menyatukan masa bersama, saatnya menunjukkan pada dunia bahwa kita juga bisa. Bersama FIP, ribuan alumni pendidik telah menanti menyebar di seluruh negeri. Ladies and gentlemen, now we would like to invite the rector of Universitas Negeri Malang and Profesor Ahmad Rafidin to deliver the welcome speech and to open this online conference. Profesor Ahmad Rafidin, time is yours. Monggo Pak Rektor untuk menyampaikan sambutannya. Aku di mute tuh ibu. Pak Rektor monggo. Pak Rektor. Monggo Pak Rektor untuk menyampaikan sambutannya. Baik. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning everyone. Dear Dean of the Faculty of Education, Universitas Negeri Malang, Profesor Dr. Bambang Budi Wiono, SP International Conference Resources Persons, All committee members, presenters, and participants who attend this activity. I'm sure that the pandemic COVID-19 condition that we feel together do not damp our enthusiasm as an intellectual to keep working and contributing to the advancement of education for all. I give high appreciation to the primary of preschool education, KSDP department, which has uh, contributed by providing a uh, vehicle for academic activities that are packed an, in international conference. The SP International Conference, it is a second year, is a certainly a strategy part of answer the challenge of education in the area of the Industrial Revolution 4.1. It is hoping that in the future, there will be many research-based articles that can provide additional insight that uh, are also able to answer the problem of education in early childhood and elementary school during the current pandemic storm. The selection of time and resource person present this uh, fascinating. This is evident that uh, as well as an an indicator that this international conference activity have been well prepared. Once again, I would like to thank all to the inform to the participants. I would like to congratulate to you for participating in this activity truly and adequately. Finally, as a rector Universitas Negeri Malang, by saying Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, I officially open the Ipsi International Conference. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
Thank you, Professor Ahar of Yudin, for, for the inspirational speech. Honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, now the second International Conference on Early Childhood and Primary Education is officially open. This concludes the opening ceremony of the second International Conference on Early Childhood and Primary Education. Now, we would like to invite our moderator, Mrs. Puri Selfie Khalifa, to take over and invite the keynote speakers for the next session. Mrs. Puri Selfie Khalifa, time is yours. Thank you, Ms. Nailo. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Puri Selfie, and I am your moderator for this conference. I'm a lecturer at the Primary School Teacher Education in Faculty of Education, Universitas Negeri Malang. And it is my pleasure to welcome all of you here in this webinar. Well, okay, before we go to the main agenda for today, I would like to give some information to you. First, you can talk to us during the webinar using the chat box or asking a question during a presentation by using a Q&A box. And I hope we can answer all of the questions today. And the second, we will have four keynote speakers that will present their presentation around 25 minutes and will be followed by Q&A sessions at the end. And if you want to ask a question, just please raise hand button and our team will unmute you. Okay, don't forget to um, write uh, your affiliation and your name before you address your question too. And the, the last one, I will also speak a little bit in Bahasa Indonesia, just a little bit, just to sum up the presentation of each panelist if it is needed, just only to make sure that you get the right point. Okay, now we will have, we will watch together the video CV from all panelists.
Okay, all right, everyone. Well, that was uh, the video tip from all our panelists. Now, we have to go to the main agenda for today. All right, our topic today is shaping a better future for young generation in early childhood education and primary education. Well, I would like to invite the first speaker. Now we are connecting to Professor Dr. Mariani Bintinur. Prof. Mariani, are you with me? Okay. Yes, yes. Alhamdulillah. Can you see me? Assalamualaikum, Prof. Mariani. Yeah, Waalaikum Salam. Okay. Wow. I would like to introduce her again, just a little bit to sum up. Uh, Dr. Uh, Prof. Mariani uh, receiving a PhD in ch Children Cognitive Psychology from Bristol University in United Kingdom, and she's a professor in early childhood education at University of Malaysia, Malaya, and she is currently the Vice President of Early Childhood Care and Education or ICCE Council Malaysia, and she is the Dean Fac of the Faculty of Education, Universitas of Malaysia, of Malaya, and actually. Uh, the, uh, Professor Mariani will be sharing to us about parenting perspective of digitalization in early childhood and primary education. Um, without further ado, because you only have a limited time, only 25 minutes for presenting the presentation, <laughs> time is yours, Prof. Mariani. Thank you very much. Now let me open my slide first, yeah? Yes. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you very much to the chairperson, Miss um, Moderator. Assalamualaikum, uh, Pak Dr. Bambang. How are you? Uh, fine, uh, thank you. Saya bilang thank you. sama mereka, saya <laughs> rindu sekali mau ke sana ya. <laughs> Kangen banget ya. <laughs> yeah, now... Um, I am only given 25 minutes. I think the first time ever <laughs> uh, for me to give 25 minutes in a keynote speaker. Normally, I'm given one hour or so, but because it is uh, online, I think we have to really restrict our time. Now, I have one slide here and another one which is about video from the Wall Street Journal. This is to also give an input from the uh, perspective of other points of view from other parts of the world. Yeah. Now, uh, my title is about parenting perspective of digitalization in early childhood and primary education. Now, kalau di sini kita lihat is parenting perspective. But I think in short, to make it simple, it's more like raising children in the digital age. Yeah. So how to raise the children in the digital age, uh, whether it is in early childhood or whether it is an, in, early, in a primary education. Now, if we look at the next one. Now, once I'm done with my presentation, but I have to remind you, please bear this in your mind. Each family have their own screen. Yeah, you have your own screen. You have your own mirror, you have your own approach. So find what is working best for you. Yeah, I'm only sharing. I'm only giving an input, being an expert in the area for more than 20, 28 years. Yeah, it's 28 years is a long time. I'm happy, but I'm not old yet. Yeah, Pro, Pro Dr. Bambang, we are not old yet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, point to discuss. I would like to discuss few points here. Where are we in going digital together with our children? And what is so-called golden age of learning? Um, what it takes to educate young children? And since now we are in the, the midst of the pandemic COVID, so we would like to know how to go about parenting in the new normal. Now, I'm just talking about parenting. Yeah? I'm not talking about teaching. Yeah, But it's more of the educating wise. If we look at... Uh, the first slide here, researchers have shown that average people spend around 10 hours a day connected to some form of technology, their phone, laptop, tablet, or the television. Now, you believe me or not, you just check your screen time. Because when you open up your, your HP, yeah, when you open up your HP, you will find that uh, the earlier one, you will find your screen time. It will take maybe one hour or two hours to check your screen time. 
your screen time is more than 10 hours, you are in, a, in danger. Yeah? You are in a red zone. Here in Malaysia, if there's so many uh, COVID patients, we call it red zone. So make sure that you are in your red zone uh, with your screen time. Yeah? Now for parenting in the digital age, uh, likewise, technology actually informs the way we raise our children and greatly affects their growth and development. So believe it or not, the technology will influence. Dia akan mempengaruhi tumbuh kembang anak itu. Ya? Dia akan mempengaruhi tumbuh kembang fiziknya, sosialnya, emosinya. Jadi kalau screen time-nya lebih dari uh, 10 hours, so it will affect the socialization. Ya? Kerana kemungkinan di sini nanti anak itu nanti tidak akan bisa uh, communicate uh, among each other. So when they are not communicating with other friends, they will not get the optimum soft skill that young children in preschool and also in the primary school should get. So tumbuh kembang anak ini sangat penting, yeah? especially in PAUD. Yeah? Kalau di Malaysia dalam uh, PAK, yeah? uh, pendidikan awal kanak-kanak. Technology affects both children and parents alike. Now, when I talk about affects parents, sometimes husband, husband and wife, they communicate less nowadays. Why? Setuju ya, Pak Dekan? Kerana suaminya sangat dengan HP, istrinya juga dengan HP, even di meja makan juga <laughs> HP. Tidak ada tidak ada uh, eyes to eyes, mata ke mata, makannya nanti tidak turun ke hati, tidak ada cinta nanti. ya. Yeah? So it affects. So technology really affects. We do not want that to affect our children. We do not want them to lose our love, to lose our attention because they need our attention in the current life. Now, so this is how technology affects us. So imagine uh, through my research from the Jabatan Kebajikan Masyarakat here, yeah, we found out that HP is one of the main factors. There are many factors, but it's one of the main factors that lead to divorce. That lead to pacar-pacar uh, melalui pertelingkahan. Yeah? Atau kadang-kadang berlaku, berlaku fighting each other. So, we should be aware that we are going digital now. Now, bila saya memaklumi sekarang ini HP itu banyak mempengaruhi yang negatif yes but we need to remember that we are now in the world of digital we are now in the digital age so we have to go going digital yeah we have to make sure that digital age is also our platform to survive now even though I said that sometimes it's negative but there are also many positive sides and we cannot avoid digital age because it's there it's present yeah so what more important here is that the parents need to play an important role especially in the use of digital and online tools when they raise their children so meaning to say that if let's say for example how long can the children be on the screen how long can the children hold the happy how long can they watch television so parents need to make sure that these are all being controlled, yeah? Because we need to keep the children uh, entertained as well, not too long, but just a little bit longer, yeah? Just a little bit longer. And you ask yourself, uh, there are about 325 participants here. Now, I don't know who are the participants, but I'm sure most of you are married with children. Me and Pak Dekan, of course, we are married. I have already grandchildren, but I'm not sure about Pak Dekan. Maybe you don't have yet. Yeah, you're still young. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Now I have my grandchildren and I have my children. So you ask yourself, how do you automatically reach your device? Yeah. In fact, sometimes, yeah. I, I just watched my, my one of my son going into the, the restroom, rumah sakit, membawa HP-nya. Bayangkan masuk ke eh, rumah sakit, sorry, uh, to toilet, washroom. Apa itu? Dibilang apa? Rumah apa? Moderator? 
Rumah kecil. Rumah kecil. Ya, rumah kecil. Rumah kecil ya Pak Dekan ya. Ya, rumah kecil. Masuk ke rumah kecil membawa HP-nya. Why? Are you going to selfie yourself? Huh? Oh, what? Yeah. So, meaning to say that we parents automatically reach the happy. We reach without asking anyone. So, don't blame our children. And don't blame if our children show their tantrum for not having been given the screen time. In fact, if I were to ask my, my children, he is big enough. We know he is big enough. He can be very angry with me. That is adult. What more is young children? So they will throw their temper tantrum. Now, the goal here in my uh, PowerPoint is that is to introduce technology as training our children only as a tool for education, not for any other things. Yeah, But at the same time, we need to also opt for non-digital forms of entertainment and also of learning. And we teach our children not to be dependent on screen for entertainment. We need to engage them with extra co-curricular activity, we call it here, as sports, art classes, coloring, collage activity at home, sand play at home. If they don't have sand, then bring them to certain places. But now within COVID, you buy your own sand. You don't have to go out. So I think uh, surrounding the, your house as well, you do have the scent. So let them play. Let them play around. Don't just get them stuck in the house and use the happy. Yeah? Because we need to also control their screen time. Now, just now I said that there are negative and there are positive sides. But we are in the world of uh, technology. So we need to be going digital. But at the same time, our children need to learn, especially for the first six-year-old, and when they go to the primary school, it is very, very important because they need to really mengambil, menguasai semua ilmu pengetahuan itu untuk mereka bawa nanti apabila mereka ke SMP dan sebagainya. Kalau di sini SMP adalah sekolah menengah. So, sekolah rendah adalah SD. So, they need to get all those knowledge, all those tumbuh kembang from the, the preschool, the early childhood education to the primary school education. So this is where the golden age of learning comes in. And for that, we should thank the internet because it's very easy to assess knowledge via internet. And at the same time, we teach us. As a lecturer, I can see that with the use of technology, it's very easy for me to find uh, input. It's very, for me, it's very easy for me to find the knowledge that I need to teach my students during certain courses in the early childhood education. So for Guru TK, kalau mereka tidak tahu memikirkan apa aktiviti yang sesuai, apa aktiviti yang menarik, so you don't need to worry, you don't have to cry. You don't have to get stressed. Why? Because you can just go to the internet, click Google. Kalau di sini kita bilang, Pak Dekan ya, um, Pak Google, Kita bilang Pak Google. ya. Kita bilang Pak Google. Ada juga yang bilang anti Google. Okay. So you go to your Pak Google. Ask him or go to your anti Google. Ask her. But you cannot ask. You just type. Yeah? You just type. And when you would like to your children to get the, the, the knowledge, Get them to type now. Similar thing, if you would like to get interesting activities for the toddlers, for the babies, for the preschoolers, just type. Yeah. So we thank this uh, internet very much. Yeah. Now, for one to five years old, five years old, their brain are like sponge. They can absorb many information because uh, for the first six year old, their neuron is only one or two branching out. So it doesn't mean that. There are many spaces that they can get more. But by getting more without controlling, that will uh, oversaturate their mind. And when it is oversaturated their mind, yeah, research has shown that it could be more detrimental rather than beneficial. So as I said, 
return internet. We give internet the million thanks, but we need to control because it could cause a little bit damage to their thinking, to their brain, everything, especially when they are over saturated. When I say over saturated, meaning that their screen time is more than the required, the specified, the relevant, the appropriate time. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now, so we see here that it is very truly uh, important that children learn learn as much as possible. But parents need to also be alert. Yeah. Do not put too much pressure on the children. Because sometimes in Malaysia, yeah, sometimes the parents they want their children to learn the three R. Reading, writing, arithmetic. Dia mau anaknya tahu baca, tahu kira, ya, yeah? uh, tahu menulis. Jadi, these parents put pressure. Di, digunakan HP itu, digunakan um, video games, digunakan video games on education untuk uh, memastikan anak itu boleh mengira, boleh menulis. But too much giving them all this information will make them stress. Yeah. So here, uh, we need this new information. But to me, even though we have the happy, we have the digital, we thank you, internet, very much. But let children be children. What does it mean? It means play is a business of children. What is my business? Giving lecture. Accepting keynote speak as a keynote speaker, moderator, what is your business? Your business is to make sure that the conference runs well. Without moderator, we cannot do anything. So she's very powerful. So she is, that is a business. So what is the children's business again? Play. But by playing, it doesn't mean by just playing through, the, through using the happy, through using the digital uh, gadget. But they can also play um, concretely, authentically, meaning that mereka boleh bermain, um, contohnya larian, main sembunyi-sembunyi. Kalau anak-anak kecil itu main pikabu atau kadang-kadang orang dewasa pun main pikabu juga, ya. Terutama antara pacar-pacarannya yang kalau suka mau happy happy, ya. So we need, we have to be very careful. Now, we have to make sure that within the digital age, parents, parents need to be very careful. Uh, they need to be very careful because there must be a right balance between inter intentional learning and spontaneous learning. Intentional learning means in school, directed by the children. At home, directed by the parents. Spontaneous means they themselves get them from the happy. Whether it is teachers or parents, parents and teachers need to be very uh, creative and innovative. Yeah, because we want our children to get their tumbuh kembang cognitive and at the same time having fun all the way. And how can we educate them? Now, I'm from Malaysia, you all are from Indonesia. I mean, uh, before COVID, I always go there. I always meet up with Pak Dekan and the rest of the, the faculty members and also just now Pak Rector. So it takes, to me, it takes the whole world to nurture the young children. So we use the proverb, it takes a village. Perlu satu kampung. Yeah? Regardless of the era, we need a village to raise a child. Yeah? No one can say, it's not true. Yeah. So in this age of technology, parents can always find the support. Yeah, you can always find the support everywhere in, in the world. So whatever challenge, we can have WhatsApp group chat, we can have uh, what else? We can have chat online, we can have Insta, we can have Facebook, we can have everything. Yeah. But even though this is digital age, but they can I don't have Insta, I don't have Facebook because I don't want. Yeah, or else I will start quarreling with my husband, busy looking at the Facebook and the Insta. So I have to limit myself, let them 
uh, use their online gadget. But for me, I just play the, the controlling part. Yeah. Now, this is the, the, the parenting remarks in the new normal life. This is within the new normal world. Yeah. Parents, they are community of support. So we have to make sure they are involved. You cannot just put them say, enggak apa, enggak apa-apa, uh, orang tuanya, enggak, enggak ke sekolah pun, enggak apa. Tidak boleh. In Malaysia, is a must. More so now, the children are going online. And when they go online at home, who needs to assist? Parents need to, to assist. They cannot say, I'm busy, I have to cook, I'm busy, I have to wash my car. No, they have to get involved. How many minutes more, I'm looking at the time. So, always invite parents and always welcome them to make sure that they have the sense of belonging, the sense of community. So, you see here, what kind of parents are you? You ask yourself. Pak Dekan, I'm asking myself. Uh, Pak Gafur, uh, siapa ini? Ibu Julius. You ask yourself. Everyone ask yourself. Are you hot-headed? Are you wimpy? Are you spineless? Or are you absent? Hello, hello, hello. Uh, you ask yourself. But whoever you are, I am different. Pak Dekan is different. Pak Gafur is different. Ibu Yulias is different. Ibu Dr. Sofia is different. The main important thing is that there is no one size fits all parenting. Yeah, parenting saya enggak sama. Moderator, udah kawin ke belum? Apa bu? Buat mam? Udah kawin? Oh, alhamdulillah. Udah kawin? Ya, sudah. Belum, ya? <laughs> sudah. Ah, sudah. Alhamdulillah. Perlu, perlu confess ya. Jangan tidak confess. Now, so your parenting is different. My parenting is different. Pak Dekan parenting is different. Whatever it is, we have our own innovative. I have to go fast. At the end of the day, you know your child best and you can give the right guidance for their needs. So this is another parenting remark. Trust your intuitive. You do what you feel is right. And make sure that it is fun. Don't get stressed. Hey, if you are, you get stressed, you get old very fast. Just look at me. I'll stay young forever. Betul ya, Pak Dekan? I don't look old. I have to confess that. Because for me, it's fun. Enjoy. Don't get stressed. Ibu moderator, don't okay, get stressed. Okay, mom. Okay, mom. Yeah. Okay, okay, mom. Now, this is another... Yeah. I have one to share here. I don't use technology in my classroom or at home because it's a buzzword or trend. But I use it because connecting my kids with the world will prepare them for the future. Yeah. So again, thank you very much. And Pak Dekan, I have one more to share. Hold on, yeah. I have one more to share. You share. Just hold on. Uh, give me about two minutes. Boleh, yeah? Okay, ma'am. It's okay, Prof. Boleh, yeah, Pak Dekan? Okay, let's have a look at this. Oh, sorry. Many parents of young children have the same complaint and concern. They can't pry the tablet computer out of their kids' hands. Young people are discovering iPads and similar devices to be the toy of choice among children age 6 to 12. 48% say the iPad is the device they're most interested in buying or getting mom and dad to buy in the next six months, ranking it above the Nintendo Wii U and other game consoles. But with tablets, the educational opportunities are almost limitless. Still, parents worry when their children get hooked on games. So how bad is it for young children to be tethered to tablets? Well, game systems have been around for a long time. But experts are observing children glued to an unprecedented extent to touch screen devices. The concern, what happens when these children fall? That overuse of tablets can cause poor school performance, greater risk of attention deficit problems, obesity, and media addiction. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends no use of toy electronics until age three, warning that during that time, the child's brain is still developing. Developmental psychologist and leading researcher on the subject, Douglas Gentle, warns of higher risk of attention deficit disorder in children under three whose brains are overstimulated. Video use isn't inherently bad if it's high quality educational content, but limited exposure while your child is still young can rise. So, how do you do that? Dr. Gentle offers four approaches to getting children off tablets. One, cut them off cold turkey. That may mean six weeks of hell, but those who succeeded say their children were bright-eyed and like new. 
to institute a token economy, do a chore like putting away toys and earn time credits. Chore apps that help with this approach to become a category in themselves. As you complete your real world goals, you gain experience points. We institute screen free zones like the kitchen table or the bedroom so they can't play with gadgets unsupervised. Or delete the entertainment apps and load up the tablet with educational ones. Parents Magazine offers, as an example, Green Eggs and Ham, an ebook that highlights words as the narrator reads. Uh, do you like green eggs and ham? Magic School Bus, an interactive storybook packed with science facts. Some look like trees with branches. And Scores, number, shapes, and colors. Suggestion five, Dr. Gentle says, replace the iPad with reading to your child. The number one predictor of IQ, he says, is how much a person was read to when he or she was young. None of these are easy, but as the American Academy of Pediatrics reminds us, children learn best by interacting with people, not screens. That's the short answer. Yeah, itu itu uh, saja saya punya uh, presentation, and I thank you all again for inviting me. Yeah, Miss Moderator, Madam Moderator. Yes. Okay, Prof. Thank you so much. That was very informative. Okay. Um. I'm, actually, I'm not stressed, bro. <laughs> but a little bit panic here. <laughs> Thank you again yeah, for don't reminding panic. me. I'm, I'm with you. Don't panic. Okay, okay. Thank you. And you can still join with us for the discussion uh, session in the end of the panelist presentation. Maybe, yeah. Okay. But, okay. Uh, 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 mm -hmm. Apa ni? Apa ya? Nama moderatornya ya? Selfie. <laughs> oh, self, siapa? Selfie. Selfie. My name is Selfie. Okay, selfie. Mm -hmm. uh, but they can, yeah, uh, and also the rest of the participant. I have to be online now because I have a meeting with ECCE Council Malaysia. It's okay. So how do I go about answering your your question if you have questions? Uh, or, actually, uh, mm -hmm. oh. actually mm -hmm. we have a Q&A box. If you can still join with our Zoom channel, you okay. can if, just... If, let's say, um, mm -hmm. I will try my best because normally the... Uh, Thing takes quite long, so maybe if some of the participant can email me here using mm -hmm. my email here, then uh, where is it? if they can email me, okay, uh, using my email here, mm -hmm. I can um, give the response okay. using my HP, okay, because at the same time while I'm online, I can also uh, answer the response the question when they ask me or if there is any question about my presentation. Will that be all right? Boleh uh, ya, Pak Dekan ya? Saya mohon maaf, mohon maaf. It's okay, but we're still missing miss you. Okay, but that's okay, Prof. Mariani. Um, thank you for joining us again. I would like to uh, uh, terima kasih yeah. to Prof. Mariani. And um, yeah. Mr. Bambang, you want to say something? Yeah, Dr. Bambang, yeah. Bila kita mau ketemu ya, Dr. Bambang. <laughs> okay. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Well, that was a very informative talk from uh, Prof. Dr. Mariani Binti Nur. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have to go to the second uh, speaker for today. Now we are connecting to Dr. Zuraida. Okay, Dr. can Zuraida. I leave now, moderator? Okay, it's Prof. okay. Can, yeah? It's okay, Prof. Okay. You can live right now. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you. Assalamualaikum, Dr. Zuraida. Waalaikumsalam. Okay. Okay. How, how are you, everyone in Indonesia? Alhamdulillah, we are in Indonesia. It's very good right now. <laughs> uh, it's great okay. to, you know, to have this kind of, um, although it's virtually, but I can see Pak Dekan there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Papa Bang. Bang. Okay. Yeah, Papa Bang, Bang, yes. Okay, but I would like uh, to introduce you once more, just to make sure that uh, participants get the right point. Dr. Jureida has been a lecturer, uh, is a lecturer uh, in Sultan Hassan Bolkiah Institute of Education, University Brunei Darussalam since 2007, and, uh, and she obtained her degree in education at Sultan Hassan Bolkiah Institute of Education. And um, she holds a Master of Education in the field of Education Technology in the University of Leeds and having a PhD at King College London. And Dr. Jureda is going to share 
to us about using TPA CK framework to design teaching and learning activities for primary and early childhood education. Well, are you ready for present your presentation, Dr. Juleida? Yeah, I would like to share my screen here. Oh, yeah, so, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay, great. Yeah. Now, without further ado, time is yours. Okay. Um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm Dr. Juraida. I'm from, um, I'm one of the lecturer at Sultan Hassan Al-Bokia Institute of Education in Brun University of Brunei Darussalam. Alhamdulillah, in Brunei, we are here a bit of heavily rain this morning. So I'm I'm really scared that my my internet connection is not kind to me. But Alhamdulillah, uh, I think it's, uh, it's getting better now. Okay. Um, uh, Okay, uh, my uh, topic for today is um, uh, particularly particularly on the using of uh, TPEC framework, okay, uh, in designing teaching and learning activities for primary and early childhood education. I think I'm uh, uh, I join in a bit like uh, just now with uh, Professor Dr. Mariania, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She's talking about. Uh, I, I. I've just joined uh, a little bit of of it, uh, of her presentation. She sings about uh, the digital technology, and I saw the videos. I think what we can do here, for example, because my uh, topic here is focusing on technology. Okay. So <laughs> yes, it might. Um, I'm not sure whether it's okay or not, but I want to uh, make sure that uh, technology is not a bad thing. Okay, because if we want to integrate technology uh, and if we want to, uh, you know, uh, use technology for our, for example, primary and early childhood education, one thing as a parent or as uh, educators, we have to control them. That's one thing, okay? We have to control them, we have to monitor them because what I can see here, technology, if they go to website, if they go surfing uh, on the website, there is a lot of websites that are, are not good. But in a better way, there is a good things about our website also. So as a, because primary and early childhood education, they are really, they are, they are still small, okay? They are, they're still kids, okay, the small kids. So as a parents, for example, we have to monitor or, or give, um, keep eyes on them, okay? So uh, we want to have this kind of integration technology is meaningful for them, okay? Uh, and it's not a bad thing. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I think first of all, I would like to thank you, uh, Department of Primary Education and Preschool, uh, Primary Education and Preschool Education, and the Faculty of Education, University of Malang, for inviting me as one of the keynote speaker for this uh, exciting event. Huh? Um, uh, it, it's really grateful because last year I was there. Uh, to give uh, to give to give a keynote speaker also, and it was really great to be in Malang, uh, physically, <laughs> and Alhamdulillah, uh, this is virtually, but it's okay. Yeah, due to the COVID nineteen um, uh, pandemic. Uh. Okay, uh, what I want to share here uh, from this slide is um, I want to introduce you the group of generation that are here now that are present. Here, for example, uh, you look at the first one, builders, uh, age between 70 plus, okay, baby boomers, generation, generation X, Y, and Z. And also, now, this is the latest generation. Okay, this is coined by, um, uh, by Schwabels, okay? They have this kind of um, research uh, going on. Generation Alpha, they call it. There are... Uh, this generation is age under six years old. I think this is the this is this is the generation that are in primary and early childhood education right now. If I if I if I uh, look at this kind of generation, okay. I think uh, is that okay if I interact with this with the participant here, because I want to use um, Padlet. Uh, Padlet for interaction. It's okay. Is that okay? Uh, maybe you can just uh, I will. copy the URL at the... Okay. okay. Okay, this is the slide. Okay, uh, 
Um, I want, uh, I would like to get interaction with the participant here because I cannot see the participant here. Yes, uh, yes, uh, yes, I'm sorry because yeah. we use the webinar uh, type. Yeah, yeah, this is a webinar <laughs> So I would like to have um, interaction with the participant. Uh, I would like to use the QR code. Okay, I, I know that some of the participants here, they are teachers. Uh, they are teacher yeah. candidates. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and they're also lecturers. So I think yeah. uh, just uh, use this QR code. Just give me one characteristic of your student that you are teaching now. Okay, I want to share this. My Padlet. Oh, um, is it okay? Everyone get the QR code? Um, actually, we have your PowerPoint slide, but maybe if you if it's okay. okay that if you type your URL or just the barcode at the chat chat box maybe okay okay, okay. I will maybe it's better for you for uh, because not all of the our participants smartphone can scan the barcode okay this is the URL but uh, wait, I'm gonna go for the okay uh, the chat room here Okay. Okay, I'm putting my Okay, that is the um, link to the Padlet. So if you mm -hmm. like to answer this to the Padlet, it would be grateful. Thank you very much. I'm going to share this one. May I just give an information a little bit in Bahasa Indonesia? Okay. 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 Yeah. Bapak-Ibu, silahkan klik URL Padlet yang ada di kolom chat box just to make sure that Dr. Juraida uh, have interaction with you. Okay, um, I'm sharing you the Padlet here. Okay. So, you can just uh, click the plus button there to answer, to answer the question. I just want to have one characteristic of your student that you are teaching now. Any characteristic that you observe, observe, okay? You observe during your teaching uh, period. Any any characteristic? Because I'm not sure whether um, how um, Indonesian st uh, students uh, the characteristic of Indonesian student uh, because it's diff because I know that there is a different um, kind of uh, students in Brunei also. Okay, now we are waiting for the response the participant yeah, to answer this padlet. Okay, Dr. Jureida, um, <laughs> just we, yeah. we, while we're waiting for the participant to typing uh, to yeah. type the answer, um, I would like to remind you that we only have a limited time just yes, to make yes, sure okay. yes. <laughs> <that> <laughs> everyone, everything is going well. I mean, yes. yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, okay, while waiting, um, okay, there is one. So energetic. Okay, there is one answer here. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, whoever answered that one. Yeah, some of our students, they are so energetic. Why is it? I think because of uh, at home, they are so energetic. That's why they bring this kind of energetic uh, attitude to the school. Okay, at school. Egocentric. <laughs> okay, I can, I can accept that. Yes, yeah, some of us, yes. <laughs> Melancholy. <laughs> <laughs> melancholy and oh aggressive oh my god yes <laughs> dramatic i mean i mean drama queen if i i think one of the characteristic here saying about uh, they are happy a uh, drama might be drama queen hyperactive yes wow okay thank you very much for your participation on this uh padlet okay yeah uh, i think ooh, ooh, okay i have a lot there a bit spoiled <laughs> okay Great, critical thinker, yeah, so unique. 
uh, yeah, I love the way that uh, uh, some of our students, they are critical thinking. Uh, they, they, they're great of in the critical thinking. So that we have to have this kind of, we have to um, expose, okay, our kind of student to be a great critical thinker. Talk less, do more, okay. Introvert. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you very much. I think I am okay with the... Do not pay attention to the teacher explanation. Okay, that's it. Okay, I have enough of the answer here. Thank you very much for your participation. Yeah, I I will get back to you here later. Okay, and then I will share you um, my point slide. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Is that okay? Uh, okay. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your participation on the uh, how do you character your student because as a teacher, we have to have a look at your student, uh, you know, your student, what are their characteristics of your students, okay, that is one of the uh, must things that you have to do as educators, okay, for especially for primary and early childhood education, because they are still uh, not mature enough to think, uh, you know, uh, maturely, okay. Okay. Um, okay. Now I want because because I know that uh, as I mentioned just now, there are the generation, the alpha generation. They are sitting in primary and early childhood uh, uh, classroom right now. So this is uh, some of the characteristic of alpha generation. Alpha generation. Uh, uh, may go back again. Uh, this is generation H. Um, under around six years old, seven years old, eight years old. Okay. So they are sitting in our classroom in primary and early childhood. So this is based on the research done by Schwabels, okay? So they, they, they are doing this kind of um, observation and also research. Okay, um, this is just, uh, what do you call that? Um, the prediction, okay, on the characteristic of alpha generation. And also they're also based on research. So, so they, they're not prediction, um, by the way, okay. Okay, the first one, uh, Shobel mentioned that the, they are entrepreneurial generation. Why they call it entrepreneurial generation? Because this generation, uh, because they have, uh, they have more access to information, online information, uh, people and resources earlier in their life, okay? It means that uh, this kind of uh, generation, if they go online, they have a lot of information uh, about, uh, for example, business, okay? Uh, how to sell things, okay, and they are connected to people. And then also they have a lot of resources, uh, they're exposed to, uh, for example, e-resources, okay. Um, and the second, that is based on Schwabel's, um, what do you call that, uh, uh, research. Huh? And the second one, they are more tech savvy and not knowing a world without social networking. Okay, this, this generation, they introduced to mobile phone before becoming teenagers. I know that because uh, in Brunei, we have this, uh, I can see that some of our kids here, uh, mobiles is, is in their hands, okay? So um, even sometimes I can see iPad uh, are in the hands of, uh, you know, six years old, five years old, okay? So they are more, more tech savvy, okay, than previous generation. And they, they, they also, communicate, you know, using this social platform, for example, Instagram, Facebook, okay, there is also TikTok here going on, okay, that is called uh, one of the social networking platform, okay. And then the third one, uh, they also, uh, what do you call that, primarily shop online, okay, and have less human contact than previous generation. Yes, because I, th I think when I saw the video just now by Dr. Moreni, um, they are saying that the, the human contact is very um, minimized huh? because uh, they connect with people with the digital technology, okay? So, and the fourth one, as mentioned by Shobal also, um, this generation, they are coddle. I mean, they are really uh, attached to the, uh, their parents. That, that's not really, um, you know, important points there. Okay, and then the fifth one, they will be more self-sufficient, better educated, and prefer 
prepare for big challenges. Why I say big, uh, prepare for big challenges? Because sometimes they have this, um, you know, they will face because challenges of the world, including global warming and also intermediate education, for example, the COVID pandemic, and they have to do online. So that is kind of a challenges they, they have faced, okay? Even for a small kid. In Brunei, we have around a month, around three, four weeks, uh, you know, our school closed. So uh, teachers have to do, um, what do you call that? Online classes with the student, fully online classes. So that's why, um, you know, they have this kind of challenges because they have to be educated via online. So they, they in, in, for example, even for early childhood education, they are doing online also. So this is kind of the things that we have to consider, okay? And, uh, I, uh, and for this, this is the characteristic of our, of our generation. Okay, uh, this is just, uh, you know, um, Schobel's um, opinion on the alpha generation based on observation and also based on research, okay? Okay, as I mentioned uh, just now, okay, this is the generation of learners now, alpha generation, especially in primary and early childhood education. They are so tech, he tech heavy and also they are also heavy, heavily connected to the internet, okay? Okay, why do we have to concern about this alpha generation? Why? Okay, um, because as I mentioned, they will experience the fourth industrial revolution, even the fifth industrial revolution, revolution. Okay, and also they also experience the artificial intelligent machine, for example, robotics. Okay, and also they also have this kind of experience on the Internet of Things. Everything Internet, everything Internet. If you want to go for information, it can, you can just Google it, and even you go for uh, shopping, it's a uh, you know, you go to the internet, you just go for shopping online. So that is the internet of things. And then the second one, uh, they also experience, you know, exposed to massive online information. So we have to have uh, whether the information is true or not. So as a parents or as educators, we have to have, uh, you know, keep, uh, keep eyes on them. We have to, what do you call matamatakan saja, we have to have a look uh, what their activities uh, through online, okay? And uh, why do we have to concern also? They are exposed to digital technology. Okay, um, in terms of education for this, um, you know, exposure of the uh, digital technology, if you want to continue to teach mm. them in the same old way, for example, to enter in traditional way, we will miss connecting with this kind of generation. Why I'm saying this? Because, okay, for example, at home, okay, the digital uh, technology, as I mentioned just now, are in their hand, okay, in their hand, this kid's uh, hand. They can go to, um, you know, uh, surfing to the internet, they can go, they can do exciting and fun entertainment way uh, through online and digital technologies. They can uh, go for YouTube, they can go for TikTok, they can go for gaming and also communicating. So, so that is uh, what I can say that um, this is the fun and exciting um, you know, things that they can do at home. So if they go to the classroom, and then we provide them with chalk and talk traditional way. What do you think of our uh, of this kind of uh, student will be? Okay, they will get what might be. I don't know. Yeah, um, I'm. I have experienced this kind of thing. Okay, because when we just chalk and talk without uh, having um, exciting activities, they will get bored. Even us. Okay. Okay. So, um, because I'm talking about technology here. One thing that we have to make sure that uh, the digital technology are used for teaching and learning uh, for this generation. We want to have a meaningful learning experience for the students, okay? Okay. Um, um, I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> I'm interrupting you because uh, you only have uh, three minutes more. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but maybe we uh, can we can talk uh, later on in the discussion for maybe. Okay, for you. yes, yes, okay, yes. Thank you, I'm sorry. No, no, yeah. Okay, the, this is the TPEC promo, okay? The, this TPEC promo is um, because I'm one of the lecturer in teaching teacher candidates. So one thing that uh, I put under, uh, we put, okay? She be put under, um, you know, master of teaching 
is TPEC framework. This is how we integrate digital technologies, content knowledge, and pedagogy. Uh, with this kind of uh, combination, we, inshallah, we have the uh, smooth uh, integration of digital technology in the classroom. Okay, uh, for this one, uh, TPEC framework, Okay, this is uh, coined by uh, Misha and Co uh, Kohler. Misha, Misha and Kohler. Okay, they are the one who um, uh, come up with this kind of integrating technology in the uh, pedagogy and content knowledge. Because previously it's only pedagogy and content knowledge. Now because of um, some uh, educators uh, integrate technology, so they put digital technologies in the um, in this uh, pedagogy and content knowledge. So that's why they call it TPAC. Okay, okay. The TPAC is the digital tools that are programs website that uh, can make tasks easier to complete. Okay, the content knowledge, of course, um, it's a computer education, English, mathematics, and science, and pedagogy. It's a collaboration, producing, and presenting. Pedagogy. Uh, okay, this these three it should be uh, aligned together. For example, the content knowledge. You know the content knowledge. Okay, what kind of pedagogy is suitable for the content knowledge? Okay, and then what is the suitable digital technology can be integrated using this pedagogy and the content knowledge. So that's why these three, uh, if you, you want to integrate technology, these three things that we have to consider. Okay, um, okay. I want to show you a video, but I have three minutes only. I'm sorry, Dr. Zuraida. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, okay, this is uh, what we expose to our teacher candidates on how do you integrate technology. Okay. Um, and also, uh, and also, we also have this kind of uh, knowledge dimension, dimension, declarative, procedural, schematic, and strategy. Okay, this is the knowledge dimension in the learning process. For example, declarative is the low level of uh, knowledge dimension is just recognized okay procedural at the second level schematic is more uh, advanced and even strategic is more advanced you can have this one i will give the slide to um to the uh, moderator okay and then uh, you can have a look see the so the content here for i recognize the change this is the example how do you do um what you call content for declarative knowledge okay this is how we expose to our teacher candidates Okay, um, I'm not sure whether I want to show this one here, but this video saying about the integration of digital technology in the uh, PRA. PRA is a kind of a, kalau PRA di, di Indonesia, tak apa bahasa apa? PRA? Uh, apa? What means? Uh, level of education for the early childhood. Oh, because, okay. Uh, uh, play group, play group. Ah, play group. Okay, yeah. In this uh, video, uh, they are showing how um, they become the. Can I just? Uh, is that possible to? Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Oh, this yeah. is the uh, example, uh, example yeah. of our teacher candidates. This video narrative for lesson ten one titled A Day is. Is that avail available on YouTube channel or no? Or not? No, because oh, this no. is a time so. for them. <laughs> yeah. The students were then guided to come up with a set of questions to interview the librarian in their school. Actually, the, the participant maybe cannot see the video. I'm sorry. Ah, they cannot see the video. Yeah. The maybe about the sharing setting, I guess. But <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. I have to remind you again that the time yeah. is. Um, oh my God! Yes, yes. Yeah, time, yeah but that, is, that, that is the yeah. that is the video that you know. Um, uh, how our teacher can do that uh, using technology. Um, you know, designing. Uh, uh, you know, designing uh, technology uh, using TPEC framework. Okay, the pedagogy is here is role playing. They become as a, the students, the pro students. Okay, the play group students. They uh, become the production crew. They interview the librarian. They become the cameraman. They become the what do you call that? Uh, voice recorder. They become the interviewer. So I think uh, it's really exciting. Uh, you know, uh, exciting when you see this kind of video, okay? But I'm so sorry, but uh, I will share just uh, this slide to everyone, okay? So sorry for that. And then... Um, okay, thank you. Thank you for sharing with us. <laughs> yeah. So I have time. 
Is that okay? Actually, the time is. Uh, I have. I have <laughs> okay. to say that <laughs> your time is. Sorry, end. sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I think I can go um, for a uh, question and answer later. You can uh, ask me. You know whether you want to uh, put the yes. um, question and in the question and answer discussion. Okay, but I hope you, that you can join with us again at the discussion <laughs> session. Yeah, of course, because a lot of the question have been addressed to you, although there are type them in the chat yeah yeah yeah, yeah i can yeah, see that yeah. there okay. is a lot of things uh, Mr. Here in the chat i've already <laughs> and yeah, then yeah. yeah okay thank you again uh that was a uh, very positive uh, ladies and gentlemen and now uh because uh, we have uh, a schedule that have to run uh, now yeah. <laughs> Thank you again, Mr. Jureda. Uh, now, in our line, there is Dr. Sofia Hartati. Assalamualaikum, Dr. Sofia. Sorry. Waalaikumsalam. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Morning. Morning. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that you are um, okay and fresh right now, yeah? Okay. Um, I, would like, uh, I would like to introduce uh, Miss uh, Dr. Sofia Hartati, she's the Dean of Faculty of Education, Universitas Negeri Jakarta, and she's one of the founding team members of the BGPA UTFIP UNG study program and a pioneer of the BGPA UT study pro program in Indonesia. And now, she's the chairman of the Indonesia BGPA UT Association. And um, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, she will talk about the digi digital utili technology utilization in early childhood education and primary school. Well, 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 without further ado, the time is yours, Dr. Sovia. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm very nervous because... <laughs> okay, don't I nervous, please. Right? <laughs> there is <laughs> pa-bam-bam. <laughs> Yeah, let me share my slide. Uh, yeah, okay. So, okay, while we waiting for Dr. Sofia to present uh, yeah. her slide, I would like to remind you again, the participant, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please using Q&A box to make sure that you can write the question for um, the uh, speakers that have been shared to us today. Uh, don't uh, please don't use the chat box, but please use the Q and A box instead. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, okay, I need a sharing screen. You can see my. Yes, yes, we can see. Maybe we can go okay. to the slideshow. Okay, okay, great. That okay. time is yours, Doctor Suvia. Okay. Thank you and uh, good morning for everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, of course, uh, uh, firstly, thank you for uh, to Pak Bambang uh, to inviting me in this conference, and I'm very happy, of course. And let us. Uh, uh, I will uh, share my 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 topics uh, from the committee about the digital technology utilization in ECE and primary school. Yeah, this is just simple uh, idea. Maybe uh, this is based on my result, uh, my my uh, my research. The what. The issues uh, of digital technology, as I mentioned from other speakers, maybe uh, we now uh, uh, have uh, entered in the uh, digital era. What is digital era? Digital era uh, marks by in uh, in this era, almost everyone uses digital technology of their life, like us. We, we we never uh, 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 break with the our uh, de device like cell phone, computer. This is the like uh, uh, like like friend. Uh, all what although what like like mother in our uh, digital. Also, as you know, Indonesia is the fourth largest active smartphone user in the world after China, India, and America based on data from Kominfo, uh, Republic Indonesia. And also we know that in Indonesia in 2018, more than uh, 100 million smartphones 
user active. So very big uh, active uh, user uh, uh, smartphone. Uh, in that total, uh, in the amounts, uh, in Indonesia, 10% of total user are children uh, under uh, 15 years old. Maybe include uh, uh, EZE and primary school. So that's why it is uh, uh, it is the big news or the big uh, critics uh, critics critics situation for uh, our generation in Indonesia. So that's why uh, we have uh, uh, we have now we have familiar with the technology because. Uh, Based on study from common sense media and all, the children use interactive technology and media from every young, uh, very young age. Yeah, maybe start from the baby, uh, one years, they they have uh, used the uh, digital technology. Also, the uh, report from ASEAN Parent Insight that. 98% of parents allow children to use electronic device. And one of third of Australian preschool, three to five years, already have their own tablet or smartphone. Maybe not only in Australia, in our country also. Okay. And so that's why uh, we have to consider uh, ICT have to uh, implement it in education. Greb said that today technology integration, sorry, gone through many innovation and things uh, that way people, things, work, and life. Of course, uh, we, we, we know that everyone uh, have the gadget and other things, likes uh, use for the for from for the thing work and other uh, activity of my life of our life, and also the school and other educational institution that are supposed to prepare students to live in modern society need to consider the integration of ICT in the curriculum. Uh, this is the, uh, uh, the, the, the opinion, the, the, the study result from uh, Gafika that we have to uh, change our, our, our thinking uh, to, uh, to, 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 to bring our children uh, in modern society. So that's why we need to consider the integration of ICT in our curriculum. And also, ICT make learning more effective. This is the uh, re study re result of the study. ICT make learning more effective with the help of computer as a learning aid. I don't know, maybe uh, we, we can feel that if we use uh, the computer or smartphone in the, our class, uh, maybe it is uh, more attractive uh, of my, uh, my teaching and learning. Okay. And, but the other hand, we know that uh, early childhood period, it is the critical time, it is the critical period of development and growth. As we know that the uh, EZE until uh, a primary school, the, this is the rapid of the, uh, rapidly of the development and growth for the children. Time when the children develop rapidly in all aspects, like uh, cognitive, motoric, language, social, emotional, religious, and also moral values. So that's why this the time for vulnerable from various influences or originating the environment, including technology. So we have to consider how to use digital technology in early childhood education and primary school education has a positive impact of, of our, on our children to, 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 to bring uh, their development and growth uh, uh, better. Okay. 
And what is the what is the digital technology? Digital technology is a tool that has certain function which can be useful for human life. Yeah, like uh, business, access information, entertainment, and other thing. Also, uh, something that allow, allows us to access information, communication with other people, or to have an influence to environment by using technology equipment. Everything we need, digital technology. Okay. Also, Nancy said in statement, Nancy statement that digital technology in ECE uh, is tools and encompasses a broad range of digital devices such as com computers, tablets, multi touch screen, interactive whiteboard, interactive whiteboards, mobile devices, cameras, DVD and music player, audio recorder, and, and so on. Also, digital technology is part of the social structure and culture of learning, play, work, and interaction in society. This is for uh, uh, for for generation uh, millennial millennial generation, maybe for uh, 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 for us too, that digital technology is of, is of, is part of the social structure and our culture for work for interaction in in uh, with others. Uh, I cited uh, from the New Zealand Council for Education Research, there are three reasons why ICT needed in EZE. Firstly, ICT already has an influence on society and the environment for young uh, people to learn. Of course, we know. And the second one, this technology offered the new opportunities to strengthen various aspects of early childhood education practice. And also the third, they are support and benefit across the education sector for the development and integration of ICT in education policy, curriculum, and practice. So many advantages uh, why we need the ICT integrated with the uh, 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 education. And also, the study show that the integration of ICT in education referred to use of computer-based communication that is incorporated into the teaching process in the classroom. For example, game education, watching video, uh, touch screen, and others. Why we use a uh, game uh, uh, interactive, uh, sorry, ICT in our class, like media, media, like game media, like game, game as a media. Uh, because uh, if the teach, if the teach uh, with the game, with the ICT, teaching and learning more attractive. Offering instant visual feedback, especially mini game, because because it give player fast result, can choose right or wrong answer, or they can finish the game successfully. This is uh, according Crosby and uh, and at all. So many useful. Uh, 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 a game for our teaching learning in the class. But in other hand, ICT also uh, uh, have to positive and negative impacts. Like technology is strongly needed for early childhood and primary school children in the current condition, like uh, in, in situation, in, in situation uh, COVID-19. We need ICT to help us uh, uh, deliver our teaching learning to our uh, 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 people, people uh, in their home. 
Learning for early childhood and primary school uses various online platform, right? From WhatsApp, Line, Google Classroom, Google Meet, Zoom meeting, and other things. This is the kind of the uh, platform for the uh, ICT in the class. According to Brockman, Meg, and Stephen, uh, this advantage of using ICT, ICT into in, in, in three uh, main categories. Firstly, for children's sociocultural development, children spend less time playing with their peer and are mostly isolated, of course. Yeah, we know that uh, uh, if the children spend time for the uh, device, of course, uh, very uh, lacking uh, interaction with uh, their peer group, also with the family. And the second one, for the children cognitive development, ICT harm children intellectual development, namely development of the imagination, stimulating positivity, positivity uh, passive, and not active. Of course, we know that the children play with the ICT, uh, uh, almost the children are very passive, not active. And also the language development, lack of communication with fear, because uh, uh, he or she only interactive with device. One one way uh, interaction. And the third one, the children uh, welfare. Children spend more time in limited space and not outdoor. Of course, the children uh, 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 only stay in the uh, in the room. Uh, in the chair, and, and they don't go to outdoor play. Putting their health uh, at risk, uh, use of sitting, which increases the risk of obesity. Yeah, so that's why many uh, children uh, obesity now, because they are more uh, passive in uh, their play. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, okay. Dr. Sophia. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I, so, I will remind so, about the I, time. I seven, first. yeah, seven yeah. minutes more. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you, moderator. The danger of using ICT by children are more on the intensive of playing with digital technology and exposure to content and radiation. So many studies uh, show us the danger of using ICT by children uh, if the children more intensive of playing with digital. So this is the uh, mark for uh, we know uh, for we know that uh, more on intensive of playing. It is the time uh, too much for playing with the digital. Yeah, like parent report that the average number of hour of use screen based device by Australian preschool uh, until uh, fourteen hour per week and toddler twenty six hour per week. It is too much. Too long for the for the children. This is my 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 small research, my simple research. How do teacher understand uh, the importance of technology and how is the use of technology in learning? Also, how is the teacher ability to use a uh, technology and what is the teacher experience in using technology in learning? This is the uh, my method. And the result regarding the teacher understanding of the importance of technology, the teacher said ICT in education is very important. They agree with, with other, uh, other people. The ICT is very important to help as a media of learning and administrative administration of learning management. Technology also is important to teach children from an early age because children know people to use gadgets. They need information of knowledge. For, for example, if they didn't get information from their parent, then the child look for the information on Google using a cell phone or tablet or other things. Yeah, so why, uh, uh, why ICT is very important in, for, for the pupil. However, learning must be in accordance with the development of ECE 
and primary school children and primary school children. This, this is uh, our statement for, uh, for, for, for ICT in the class. How about the using technology in home and school learning? Technology are familiar for, uh, to the children, including cell phone and others. But also they have to know new newspaper and magazine. It is for balancing. Parents also often use laptop so that the children also familiar. The teacher also use a laptop to introduce them terms of learning. Uh, this is why we need technology in the school and home. Some of parents support the use of ICT for their children by giving time for the children to play handphone with safe content. And that's why in this reason, parents want to keep their children calm at home. I, I think it is not only calm, but get advantage uh, from the ICT. Another reason, parents who accompany their children to play cell phone has a positive impact as well. Yeah, of course, uh, uh, this is the, the, the our hope. Yeah. Uh, the children can uh, learn about the speak English and look for the new knowledge. And this is the ability of teacher to use technology. Some of the teachers said that the teacher must have the ability to use technology that integrated learning material. This ability must be provided before the teacher touch children. Like they shared for information on Google about the material to be touched tomorrow. And teacher also were asked to be able to convey information from internet in a language that could be captured by children. Uh, this is why the teacher have to learn about the technology. And the last one, experience using technology in learning, the teacher use a laptop, introduce a film or video because children are more interested in displaying the video or picture than the laptop. Educational film really help a teacher to introduce interesting knowledge to children either in the class or at home. Usually children would bring this attractive impression about their favorite character, such as a superhero, princess, and etc. Digital technology to be taught in ECE because help, help children get to know learning material well, and children will be able to store their work in, in digital form. According Sally and Satomi state that the use computer and innovative technology in early childhood in the classroom was able to develop language such as writing, reading, problem solving, and drawing. Cos and Chen considered the suitability of tablet computer for children for age three to six to draw and develop technology independently. Ching and Wong Si and Kedem said explore kindergarten and first grade students to create and reflect on the digital photo journal. Also food, exam, examine more a constructive system to support language and literacy development. Learning integrity technology has a higher level of constructivism than learning without technology. It is according uh, from Sally. Students were able to make that best use the potential of technology. However, it still required a balance, again, a balance in important learning, imaginative play and technology integration. Professional learning should address practitioner belief about digital media and early years pedagogy, including providing time and space for teacher reflection. And also Wang and, and Yu Li, the technology curriculum and digital technology should be carefully designed to cater to young children needs. Um, and, I'm sorry, okay. Doctor, okay. Doctor, okay. 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 <laughs> Actually, we are running out of time right now. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. This is the. Uh, it, this is only only one slide more. Uh, the last slide. Uh, three potential reasons why technology enter in early childhood and primary education, according Wang and Hood. 
The debate about computer use with children still hinders teacher decision. Some of teachers still considering to use computer in the class. I don't know what the reason. Maybe this is uh, 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 depend on her or his uh, uh, skill to use the computer in the class. Teacher felt that they were not ready, ready and unconfident to integrate the technology meaningful. Yeah. And also integrating technology may be an insult to traditional teacher-centered learning design. Mm -hmm. Teacher felt their role in the class. And this is our conclusion. Maybe uh, you can see my slide. Yeah, actually we've already yeah, sent uh, all of yeah, the okay. panelists uh, okay. PowerPoint slide. But maybe okay, we can let you, them uh, talk uh, may, uh, longer in the discussion session. Okay. Dr. Sophia, I'm okay. sorry again. Thank you, thank you, thank <laughs> you. Thank, thank you. you, that thank was you. very informative and very positive, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Now, okay, thank you again, Dr. Sophia. I hope that you can still uh, join with me yeah. in this uh, sure. Zoom. <laughs> channel Sorry. and okay i would like to invite the fourth speaker for today uh associate professor dr kanita nidjarunkul hello uh dr kanita okay great <laughs> hello please unmute the dr kanita unmute okay wait i'm sorry we are uh, my our technician is still unmute. Dr. Kanita, please. Okay. Can you hear my voice? Okay, great. Yes, we can hear you clearly. Yes. Good morning, Dr. Bambang and <laughs> Dr. Sophia and uh, Holifa. Yeah, Holifa, okay. <laughs> okay. You remember my name, Holifa, okay. Yes. Yes, I met you yesterday. Okay, okay. Uh, uh -huh. Alhamdulillah. I would like to introduce you one more time, please. Yeah, okay. Okay, we are connecting to uh, Dr. Kanita. Actually, um, she's uh, the associate professor of uh, in the Prince of Songkla University in Thailand since 2009. And she holds her uh, master degree in University of Missouri, Columbia, USA, and finished uh, her PhD in a curriculum and instruction in edu educational technology in University of Missouri, Columbia. And now she's going to share to us about shaping a better future for young generation innovation in early childhood and primary education. Without further ado, because we have only have limited time, you only have a 25 minutes to present your presentation. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. the time is yours. Yeah. First of all, I'd like to thank Dr. Bambang that let me have this kind of chance to share our education during the COVID time or new normal time here. Uh, my, my topic is going to be uh, sharing as the three, three periods of education, like the first period and the second and the, the last period. Like uh, the one, one p the first period, we we lack of instructional design for for the kid or for the kindergarten or for the elementary school or for the secondary school and even the vocational. So uh, technology about that time, we have some school in Thailand can have this kind of like a virtual classroom. Uh, in, in the south of Thailand, we have like almost 2, 000, uh, 20,000 school. Uh, I'd like to share my, my, my PowerPoint.
Yes. So, first okay. of all, my presentation in your topic, that's very nice topic, the shape a better future for your, for your generation or young, young generation, innovation, early childhood, and timely education in new normal time. Um, for early childhood in Thailand, it's very, very serious about that time because the student don't have uh, some technology that fit for the lesson. And even in the primary school, I got some, some sentence from the newspaper after the 1st of July. After the 1st of July, the school reopened again. Everyone say like this. We understand the situation have improved to the point, to the point such, uh, to the point that many schools want to return to normal. That is the situation in Thailand. The other sentence, they said, we want that as face-to-face -face learn is better for students than studying online. Or the, after that, after that, the school nationwide has been order prepared social distancing measure for the school open on the July the first. So from the July the first, the school is open, we open again, and every student go to school. We have many, 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 many ways to take care by using technology. Some school can give the give technology to the child at home and some school they don't have so in the school they have to separate the student into three group one they have technology second they have to study by online one they don't have any technology so our student even in the primary school, they cannot have the technology in their home. So the parent waiting for the work kit from the teacher. So the teacher have to like drive the motorcycle and give them the, the work sheet and some textbook instead of technology. Because we are, I don't know where, the other, the other country, but in Thailand, some part of us, if in the in the urban, some students cannot use the ICT and technology in during this COVID time. After that, we have we have three kind of new normal class instructional model like on-site learning as a traditional instruction in classroom, online learning as a blended learning. And they, they separate blended learning into four styles. One style is flipped classroom. So flipped classroom like uh, grade seven come to school this week. Next week is a grade five because the school don't have enough technology for the kid to study, but and flip day like Monday, Friday, Tuesday, something like that. The student can come on Monday and skip when and uh, Wednesday and skip to Friday, and flip the number, the number. So we have like thirty student in the class. So. One to fifteen can come can come to school like on Monday. One week, like a, and after that, sixteen to thirty can come next week. And flip for ladies, some students have to come to school because they don't have technology. Otherwise. If they would like to stay home, like the uh, like early COVID, 
the teacher have to drive motorcycle and give them a worksheet and some textbook to the to the home. Uh, the third one is on air learning. We have the distant learning television. It's for our the night kings. Uh, we use uh, distant learning television is an on air learning. So we can uh, watch cast from the from the uh, the school and send to the school around around Thailand, you know, around Thailand. We have uh, distant learning television. We have a master teacher in Wahin. And we have uh, distant learning information technology, DLIT, that the teacher can use after, if they cannot use on time, during on air, they use DLTV instead. Sometimes they can chat, sometimes they can social network, or sometimes they can like an email. This kind of uh, new normal classroom instructional model that we, I, I think I got from that during this time. This is the thing that uh, our government prepare for the school. So they prepare Distant uh, instruction. I use this distant instruction instead instead of distant learning because distant instruction because we have to teach teach student and learning with the student too. We start from the mid twenty and twenty by online and on air. And when we when we prepare about about this in on air online course and on air course, online the school that that uh, have enough uh, enough like technology, they can let the they let the teacher make the the lesson, the subject during the school close because the school close uh, during was that May no March April and May, so the teacher uh, make a course for the kid and the on air learning. The DLT, we make many class for the kid, but this technology uh, try to will be prepared. And after that, we use this kind of on the first period to the second period distant instruction yeah we use on site on site so the one who get in the school and the one who get the teacher go to the go to their house and meet with their parents and the online and the on air they use this like about two or three months some can evaluate some cannot on the third period that we use that like a evaluation, during this time, we're going to online evaluation and on-site evaluation. About that time, the parents work very hard. The parents have to stay with them all the time. Even grandpa and grandma have to take care of them. The student like this. So does, uh, in this time, the school have the school role, uh, try to process the distant instruction in COVID-19 situation. This school under office basic education, I, I going to show the administrator and teacher and educator at, uh, during that time. This is the administrator role. So the administrator role, have to prepare the readiness like planning process, creative community, uh, committee, survey the readiness, develop planning for help, download and printing instructional material uh, and send to the, the, the student's house, student's home by mail or by, by teacher. Public relation, they try to P, PR to the parent, what kind of 
parents have to take care, prepare the instruction handbook for the teacher. So the teacher in school uh, during that time help each other to make a handbook for each subject that they're teaching. Manage the money or physical money to support the fine for the kid. Create the channel to communicate and answer the question between parents, students, and teacher, and creative moral and reinforcement to the teacher. So the administrator have to do many things to make the education go on. I'm sorry, I'm Dr. Ganita, we only have 10 minutes more. Ah, okay. How, how many minutes I have left? Uh, 10 minutes left. 10 minutes, yes. yes. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. And then the other part, and uh, we have the, the other two or three, enforce and following, for, follow up, help solve the problem. They make, uh, they set the time to take care of the student. After that, the evaluation. For the teacher time, they have many level of the teacher and educator to take care of the kid. This is the step that they make the teacher understand the COVID situation uh, with education uh, uh, with education by population or site visit, parent and evaluation their uh, instruction. This is the teacher have to prepare. Uh, they have to prepare. After they prepare, they can do many things. When they know the student, some student at the like at the first grade, they cannot read. They don't know how to teach. Parent cannot know how to teach and how what kind of method that the teacher have to train the parent teach the kid reading the book and meeting some parent meeting uh, student for each each week. Uh, the teacher role in elementary school a little bit different from the from the uh, early childhood because early childhood have to stay home with their parents and or the grandma or grandpa. So technology that parents have to 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 have like a tablet, something like that will instructional material like this will be have some some student not all students can have. So technology is good, but if they have, they have every, they, everyone have it. Yes. And met the student and measurement and evaluation. After this, the student uh, who are study in lower secondary school, they are, get the same treat as the elementary school. This is a, like a policy of the government or Ministry of Education that tell the teacher in the school have to do this. And when we talk to the, uh, the teacher in the school, the teacher said they like to come back to school instead of going to stay home because they don't have any friend and they don't have any, like a playground for them to learn. And the teacher have like, take uh, more time to prepare the, the instructional material to send to the student at home. So from this situation, the technology that we, we said the technology is consists of a, like a instructional material, instructional hardware, instructional software, and the methodology to help the teacher can, can manage the, the class. The, the method that the teacher used during COVID make the, long times ago or before COVID, the teacher never instructional design for their course because they followed uh, their uh, lesson plan. So from that, from the COVID time, they have a new lesson plan. 
that follow up with technology, use online, use tablet, and use on air, DLTV, more than usual. We, we used to have DLTV, we used to have DLTV, but they never think that that, that that good enough or that convenient enough, but about in that COVID time, they use a lot of DLTV and the DLIT, and they use a lot of instructional material like worksheet, textbook, more than as usual. And for the parents, for the parent, parents said they used they used to be a parent, and after the COVID, technology make the parent more learn more in technology how to use tablet and teaching them by uh, they have some game that the parents got from the DLTV or DLIT that the, uh, make the student make the kid learn more at home because. Uh, when I visit the, the school, I saw the student, they just sit quietly at least 10 minutes after that they play. So technology can hang them about 10 minutes, that's all. And after that, we have to have an activity. That is the new thing that the teacher have to think to take care of the kid, how they can learn the subject or content by using technology that make them happy and sit down and working by themselves by their own more than 10 minutes, like might be 20 minutes. And after that might be uh, working with a worksheet. So technology, they now, everyone know, understand that technology will be high end of us. We have a new, many, many new technology and the teacher, some, some cannot get through, some cannot get through. That COVID time make the, make the teacher learn more and understand technology, especially digital technology as the uh, Dr. Sophia said something like that. So everyone think technology, digital technology will be important. And then uh, the teaching method is good enough for the learner. They can learn by themselves. That is a, is a, a, new, a new innovation that will make the student learn more like uh, branded learning makes it more, more than uh, like two years ago. After COVID, we use branded learning flip classroom a lot because we make uh, the classroom this week go to school, next week stay home. Flip classroom, that is the theory of the flip classroom. So the student uh, can, can learn like that. Like, uh, and make the student understand when they learn by themselves, they learn, they gain more, they gain more. They gain more, more than the teacher teach, but the teacher have to motivate by using technology while they are like 20 minutes in the class. This is the, I think this is the COVID make teacher more instructional designer and more uh, media specialist uh, and more, uh, more fee, uh, psychological. They use more psycho psychology in the class by online. So innovation of the uh, COVID time will make the teacher alert in using technology with their teaching and make the student learn more by themselves, by making, uh, what's that? Le online, online courses. But anyway, teachers still be an uh, important person in the class. Even, even in the 
online class. So I believe that teacher can be can be um, sent home to be a classroom, send the parent as an assistant teacher. Uh, COVID can send the parent to be the first teacher to their child. So parent more interest in their child learning. So I have the one uh, sentence, school might stop, but learning cannot stop. That is the thing that we have to go on and continue to let technology help us help students learning by themselves. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Kanita. That was great. I would like to uh, highlight again, school might not stop, uh, might stop, but learning cannot stop. Well, okay, ladies and gentlemen, now, now we have to go to the discussion session. Actually, this is a Q&A session for all of the panelists here. Um, actually, we have a several person that have been raised hand and several questions in the Q&A box. Maybe I will choose um, the first uh, right, the first participants. Which one? Which one? Okay. Okay. Uh, actually, we have uh, several questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which one? Okay. I would like to. Uh, this is for the Dr. Jureda first, maybe. Uh, maybe all of um, Dr. Kanita and Dr. Sofia uh, can also answer this if it is possible. Uh -huh. Actually, this is from Aleni Gunadi. Uh, she asked about how can we measure the TPACK for early childhood educators? Um, Dr. Zuraida? Oh, okay. Dr. Zuraida? Oh, she's not joining us. Or oh, maybe uh, I will choose another one, maybe. Mm -hmm. This is from uh, from Mr. Dedi Kuswandi from State University of Malang. Uh, maybe this is, uh, okay, this is uh, from, I will choose another one from Anik Lestari Ningrum. Okay, maybe this is for all of the panelists here <laughs> that are ready to answer. How to minimize the negative, the, the negative impact of digital based on children learning right now? How to minimize the negative impact right now because we are now in the can in the pandemic and um, lots of the students have to uh, on their smartphone and using gadgets uh, during the the day uh, how can we minimize the negative one maybe dr sofia want to answer uh, okay yeah i try to answer the the question uh, how to minimize the of impact from uh, of impact ICT right uh, of impact negative yeah of impact negative from uh, ICT uh, uh, to the children uh, yeah again ICT is not a danger for, uh, for for the children if we have the balancing and also we have uh, we, we know about the how the uh, to give uh, a time, enough time for the children to play uh, the, 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 the gadget, yeah? Uh, so we back to uh, our, uh, our task as a mother, as a, uh, as a teacher. Yeah, when the children uh, play with the, their uh, gadget, their smartphone or their uh, uh, laptop with the internet, of course, our uh, uh, our uh, apa pengawasannya supervision, yeah, uh, supervision uh, from teacher or mother uh, have to uh, uh, tight. Like uh, uh, we 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 can uh, uh, don't let uh, the children uh, uh, play uh, gadget itself. 
have to companion with the uh, 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 adult parent or teacher or uh, other uh, adult uh, other adult like uh, a brother or uh, old sister then the that's one so that's why it is responsible for uh, uh, for, for for mother yeah. teachers to know uh, how to use uh, ICT as well. So we can prepare everything, what uh, our children do with their gadget. Yeah. Uh, we can choose for, 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 for our children, which one the best for, for, for them. Yeah, it is the, the first. So uh, uh, I think uh, back to uh, our role our role, yeah, parent and teacher. It is for the minimize negative impact for our children to play with the uh, gadget. I think that's all. Thank you. Yes, I'd like to answer. Okay. Uh, that, uh, minimize the ICT. We can use like a textbook, small textbook that integrated with technology. Like the book, the student can read, can play, yeah. play by, like we can use augmented reality and put in the small book. And yeah. so they can learn by reading, mm. they can learn by listening, mm. and they can learn by writing. That yeah. is the learning mm -hmm. style for the kid. Yeah. So to minimize the technology, you have to use printing or printed material. Mm -hmm. and then put the technology in that in that book and so they can do, they can learn like how how the water flow from the top to down so the small textbook is good for the minimize the student that uh playing cell phone or smartphone but they use cell phone and smartphone as a technology that they can learn content from the book so augmented reality the teacher have to learn and they put uh, that augmented reality in the book even the textbook that the government i think the indonesia make a textbook for the kid so the textbook for the kid even uh, early childhood or elementary school or secondary school, they can use augment, augmented reality or VR or QR code that make the student use uh, like value of the cell phone better than using play game many times. So I think when I saw the kid play game all the time with cell phone that make me unhappy what they're going to do in the future. So the textbook should be integrated, new technology in that. They can learn by themselves because they like to learn by themselves or self-directed learning instead of have teacher, with teacher all the time. Yes, this is my answer. Okay, thank you for Dr. Sylvia and Dr. Kanita that have answered all of uh, the questions from uh, Ani Kediri. I would like to uh, open the Q&A session for the, the participant that can uh, uh, ask directly to us. Uh, I will unmute uh, Sunia Yahliana. Hello. <laughs> Are you with me? Please unmute yourself. Hello. Okay, because <laughs> there is no connection. Maybe I will go to Rihal Yanu Luciana. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sul Suliana, Suliana, hello. Um, Mrs. Suliana. No. Okay. Well, okay, we'll go to the next <laughs> participant. Maybe this is lots of right ra hand, I'm, I'm sorry, but when I call them, there is no <laughs> connection. Okay, we go to Rihal Yanulusi. Hello? 
Hello, Rihal. Okay, there's no again. Okay, I will go to Hulatul Lutfia. Miss Hulatul, are you with me? Okay, <laughs> maybe we can just go directly to the Q&A box, I guess, yeah? Okay, I'm sorry. Maybe we go to the next question for um, to Mrs. Kanita. This is from Mia Rahmawati. Okay, the question is, how was the assess, uh, actually, how was the assess, how is the assessment process carried out for early childhood education students during the COVID period? We can use like a instructional mm -hmm. material as the object so they can learn more. So the, uh, during our COVID, the student make more instructional material like a game sent to the school. So now, from now on, the game now, when we have a block, like a wood block, and then put some, some picture in the, like put the apple in the other side, put the strawberry, the, the second side, many, they have about six sides in the uh, square. Uh, the, st the teacher can use the ICT with play with game and play with something, some, so, uh, some content in the, in the small block, wood block. And if they want to know what is apple and how the apple grow up and how the strawberry grow in the farm. So augmented reality is the best choice for the student can do the tablet and learn more the apple from the small from the small wood block that they can use. When they have the wood block, they can use their finger and they can think about how to, how to join each block together and make one, one farm, something like that. Or the, or the, what's that? Uh, uh, like a model. You have a model, like a model of tree, model of apple, model of uh, branching stem of the of the apple tree. So they can learn what the stem working and what the fruit of the apple tree grow up and what when they have to give the flower. So one one tree of apple make an augmented reality and they can learn by themselves. By sometimes if we have more technology, when we use our our hand pass and something in the tree speaking. So the student can learn and listen if they're interested and they can learn more and we can use that. You can go to the YouTube that and those. Yes, I don't know that good enough for them. Okay, thank you, Dr. Kanita. Maybe this is for uh, Dr. Sofia also. Actually, how is the best assessment to, uh, to this uh, kind of uh, learning actually? Like, um, you know, how to really assess the student's process learning right now in this COVID pandemic because a lot of the students have to learn by the parents and um, they have to, yeah, they have to, <laughs> to be at home at during the day, actually, the assessment is very um, difficult task right now for the teachers. I guess, yeah. Okay, maybe <laughs> because you are smiling right now, you can you are ready yeah. to answer yeah. this. Okay, I, I try to answer. Yeah, again, uh, we, we don't think too hard about the assessment uh, in this situation for our kid. Yeah, so please simple things. Uh, uh, how about uh, uh, get knowledge in their home? And and we can, as a teacher, we can uh, collaborate and uh, simple collaboration with the parent, like asking to the parent about the uh, uh, situation of the kids, what they what they play, what they read, why did. Uh, what, what, what they do in uh, daily activity in their home. 
So uh, we, uh, the, the teacher uh, don't use uh, like a uh, uh, rigid uh, rigid uh, form to get uh, information from the the teach the, the, the parent. Yeah, that's simple simple asking uh, simple asking to to the parent uh, ask about the. Uh, what what the, the kid do today? Uh, she is a, a help a parent, help mom uh, in the activity in the daily activity like cooking, cleaning, or other thing. Or maybe uh, he is a uh, take a bit at uh, with uh, itself or it with itself. Just it. Don't ask about the. Uh, the reading, uh, uh, like don't ask about the uh, STEM reading, uh, writing, or other things is uh, academically. Yeah, uh, we can ask about the uh, uh, skill, uh, uh, apa keterampilan hidup sehari-hari. Daily skill. Yeah, yeah daily skill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, practical life. Yeah, our our post uh, in this situation the teacher keep the children to get a knowledge about the habit clean clean habit kebiasaan hidup uh, yang baik in this uh, condition so uh, i suggestion for all the teacher don't hard think about the uh, rigid assessment just simple thing yeah, focus on the daily habit. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Sophia. So maybe um, we have to focus more on the daily habit instead of the, uh, yeah, like the uh, cognitive um, development maybe, yeah. because uh, this is early childhood education system, yeah. Okay, yeah. now maybe we have to answer the next question. This is from, um, KBTK Laboratorium. Uh, I don't know who is, the, <laughs> who is text this one because we only have the evaluation name. But may, we, actually, uh, she or he has the good question. Actually, how is the best way um, to teach early childhood students to learn about character building education at home? Actually, um, this is like the main point, the, the biggest point right now, it's about character building and this is the COVID pandemic and this is like technology integration and actually how the best way to teach right now because uh, they spend a lot of, uh, all of the day with their parents. Maybe uh, this is, who's, who's, who's gonna answer this one? Uh, Dr. Kanita first or Dr. Sofia? <laughs> We we learn about uh, oh my from from Dr. Kanita. Okay. Dr. Kanita okay. first, okay. Uh, for characteristic building, what kind of characteristic like to be uh, have a good responsibility for the early childhood? As example, for example, that at the home, at home, the parent have to have a playground small playground in the uh, in the living room or out, outdoor small small playground outdoor and the parents can use a flag and put it on the or block it on the playground if they want to learn what is the sand support we, we put the sand in the playground and we put a small cactus in the playground and because the kid early childhood love to play with ground instead of doing learning but in playground have to have more content in the playground like you can put the content in the flag and the student can learn or uh, behave after after they use the flag and leading or playing the flag the uh, study content from the flag and then they have to put it back in the playground. They don't have to take it out from the playground. So after they finish that 
playing, they can have a com very complete playground. And then after that, the other student can use that playground. That the playground, every every early childhood, the early childhood love to, lay, to play playground. And the playground can use like, a, they can develop their finger how to, they, because the, the early childhood, they don't have to write. Yeah? I don't know, you, you learn your uh, uh, Alif Basa. Oh yeah, right? Hijaya in yeah. Arabic. Arabic language. So they, they can use your, their finger, write that kind of word in the playground. And they don't have, we don't have to pay anything more, but they, they, their finger as a pencil. So when they use their finger, they, the, their finger will be stronger. They can use five finger, drawing something in the playground. And after that, if their responsibility, they can go to, to the thing and clean themselves, clean the hand and, and the, you know, that is the responsibility with the uh, characteristic building in the first time is like for responsible, responsibility, make them responsibility to the, the, the for, for themselves. You see, that is a thing, breakout for the early childhood is important to, to develop their finger instead, finger with responsibility and clean during COVID. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Kanita. Now we go to the Dr. Sobia, who is okay. already ready to answer this question. <laughs> yes, okay, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Mungkin ini harus pakai bahasa Indonesia ya, kayaknya biar lebih uh, uh, dipahami. Takut salah. This is the character building. Sorry, uh, Profesor Kanita. This is the our value. Uh, this is not building itself, but this is the character it uh, it 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 uh, the uh, it ourself. Yeah. Uh, character building. Ya, yeah, yang uh, yang dimaksud adalah bagi. Uh, Kalau misalkan di dalam uh, apa uh, it, it our standard it our uh, framework ya ada 18 karakter salah satunya misalnya like responsibility respect ya and and and, and many and, and other things ya yeah. uh, again back to our parent how to uh, build the character building for our children at their hope. The first time it is the responsible from the parent. Again, the parent is a main educator in uh, for the children. As mentioned, Kihajar Dewantoro, that the home is the main uh, main school for the children. So that's why a parent have to uh, consistent to enhance the children with the simple task in their home. Yeah. Like uh, they do uh, uh, daily habit again, daily habit. We, we build the children to do daily habit, daily habit. Yeah. Like uh, uh, take a bedroom, uh, uh, pakai baju, pakai baju. Uh, wear the clothes, yeah. yeah, and also take the uh, plate and the spoon from the kitchen, and to clean up after uh, eight, and also uh, keep the brothers, young brothers. It is uh, we we address to uh, responsibility to uh, our kid in their home, and. Of course, that the parent have to guide from the teachers. Yeah, the the teacher can collaboration with the simple, uh, simple, simple thing, simple, simple sentence, simple, simple uh, message to the parent. How 
we build the character for our children. So this is the time, the good time for us to collaboration with the parent in the pandemic situation. Parents have time, a lot of for uh, for teach the, their 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 their, uh, their 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 kid. Also, we can uh, support the teachers and the, the parent with the parenting uh, the parenting platform. Uh, not too long time, only one uh, maybe fifteen minutes, thirty minutes for one week for uh, two, uh, for, for per day. We can uh, touch with the parent. Uh, so how the parent very uh, safe and comfortable uh, uh, for, uh, connecting with the school and the teacher. I think that's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That was great. So maybe I will highlight like uh, again that actually this is the collaboration is the most important thing between the teachers and the parents, right? So maybe we have to um, make sure that our uh, the, the parents will have the correct and the right point of the teachers that want to uh, that want to the student have to be able to do the skills like uh, etc. Like the responsibility or just the other character. So we have to make sure that we have a good um, like yeah communication with parents. That's the most important thing right now, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Now maybe we can yeah uh, use the right hand uh, the right hand uh, mode. I would like to invite uh, this is uh, Miss Asri Insani. Yes. Hello. Here. Yeah. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Can you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Can you hear me? Oh. Sorry. Sorry. I have a a, a bad connection. Okay. 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 Great. Uh, Maybe you I can uh you. just address uh your question too, and then don't forget to um uh, to introduce yourself first. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Asri from ONJ. Uh, currently, I'm doing my research about the parental involvement as well. And then uh, I really interested with the uh, doctor. Hello? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. All right. Okay. You can turn about on the... your video because we cannot see your <laughs> your face, actually. <laughs> Dr. Kanita oh, okay. right now is... <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dr. Kanita, I, I really uh, interested with your slide about the. Your, Actually, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt again. Maybe you can turn on your video. Your, we have to see. All right, it's um, uh, not really bright in here because it's a bit raining. But I try to uh, turn yeah. on my video. Just right. a little bit to turn on the video. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, I'm using my my phone. I'm sorry. Is it? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Now, ah, alhamdulillah. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Great. I, I was yeah. not being prepared for this anyway, uh, but it's fine. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, doctor. I wanna uh, share or uh, can you share with us with the, your slide last time? It's about. Um, Sorry, I'm trying to see the the classroom. Nice light. What topic? Yes, uh, about the classroom in new and uh, normal. Last time. Uh, As on on site, online, and on air. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay. It's it, it's really interesting for us because uh, right now we are in the pandemic situation. We are uh, maybe seventy percent. We are doing in uh, online. So, uh, can you advise us how to manage our uh, curriculum as well to, I mean, like uh, to adjusting with the the online situation? Because uh, should we uh, uh, also adjusting the curriculum or the percentage of um, educational and practical life skills or? How we combine it and make it possible in online learning? Yes, it depends on your content or topic. If you want to teach them how to math, 
uh, how to do the math, or you want to teach them how to do the biology, or you want to teach them to be uh, Malayu, something like that, or English language, depend on the topic or the subject. Uh, uh, online class, like if you have uh, teaching them how to do the math, so you have to be a demonstrator, a good demonstrator. So you have a very good planning to be a good mathematic, like in the elementary school, the flat card, the small like the digital two, digital three, digital five, can everything it should be clear enough for them to play and them to follow. And you have to be slow and speak slow and let them by like instructional strategy said, when the teacher teach the math in the classroom by online, you can just like uh, start with an revision or introduction and review. Introduction, review, or review and introduction. So the 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 in the review, it should be the 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 thing that you have thought them last week or last hour or yesterday something like that. And after that, if they know the thing that you teach by online yesterday, so today they will learn. If they cannot understand yesterday, today they cannot do anything. The learning online, it doesn't make sense to them. So after that, after you teach each class, each class on by online, you have to evaluate. Evaluate by their speaking, by chat, or do some, what's that, uh, worksheet, or uh, exercise and send back to you right away because technology very fast. By if they have more cell phone, they can take cell phone and send back to you by the thing that they they study math from online. You don't have to delay. Let them send tomorrow. So. Tomorrow you cannot teach that boy or that girl because they don't understand the thing that you teach today. And tomorrow they won't understand the other topic. That is the thing that online teaching, the student have to do right away, not delay, right away. After teaching, just let them access evaluation them, not too many items, like 10 items, three items, that's enough. If they can do, if they write on the paper, just use a cell phone, take a picture and upload. Or if they can make on the, what's that? In online, on chat, they can do it. So tomorrow you will be happy. You will be happy. It's online course because tomorrow they can multiply, you know, easy. That is the thing that the teacher have to do right away after teaching the new things. But before you teaching a new thing, you have to revise them. The thing that you have to revise, the thing that you have taught them last week or last yesterday or something like that. Anyway, if they don't understand, you can. they cannot go on the new one that you're gonna teach them. Okay, you get more. You understand? Yes, I, yes, I got the point. Uh, in my uh, uh, in my summary, that means uh, we decrease the material. I mean, uh, the total of the material is not really much, but for the evaluation or, or review, we should do it uh, after. I mean, like uh, it should be do on the that time in the same time, not really long. Uh, I mean, uh, you have uh, another activities and then you review again. 
that's the the manage of your time is also uh, really uh, uh, the point is how how you manage your time in the short yes. time you have to to okay. to to take only small piece of content not all content because Correct. every content has a step you know and a step you have to pick one step that can go on next week next next hour or next month so you can take only a small step teach them if the small step they cannot understand the big step it won't be happen I do you understand that they say okay i think that's yeah. enough thank you this so is much. astri okay thank yeah. you again for joining us okay Mm -hmm. Now I would like to go to this one. Actually, I don't know. Uh, can I ask this one, uh, Mrs. Rihalia Nulusi? Are you with me? Okay. No. So I would like to move to this one. Actually, uh, yeah. Um. So this is from Mia Rahmawati again. Actually, yeah. <laughs> It is about the balancing system. Actually, Dr. Sophia mentioned about the parenting uh, roles in this uh, time. So how to create uh, the balance system and uh, to be make a learning in conducive area, conducive environment, I mean. So the children can get the uh, children's right to get effective learning. Actually, how can we make sure that the parents and the children have the balance system in the learning in the in this era in this technological era for uh, dr sofia first maybe and then can be uh, additional answer from dr kanita okay thank you uh, how to make balancing uh, uh, in this situation between ict system and uh, hands on uh, activity maybe, yeah. Uh, again, we back to our parent, yeah. Uh, if uh, the parent uh, do not know about the uh, uh, how to how to create how to create balancing uh, environmental learning in their home, yeah, we need uh, support the parent. Uh, with the parenting system from the school to to to, to share uh, how to uh, create a, a learning environment in in for the our child our, our kid in their home like uh, we, we can suggest uh, how, 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 how how many time for the uh, uh, learning with the ICT, uh, how the how the how the how many hours for the children learn by ICT, like uh, with computer or a smartphone or other things like the TV. Uh, this is the rule from the parent for the for their kid, and the next one, the the, the parent have to create like uh, Dr. Kanita, uh, uh, support the hands-on activity. When the kid uh, play with their uh, uh, brother or sister, with the many things, uh, our equipment in our home, uh, panci, begitu ya piring spoon <laughs> sapu begitu uh, they, they can they can learn and everything from the uh, their daily activity they can learn mathematics they can learn uh, uh, writing read also with the uh, uh, daily activity and the the parent have to uh, shop like books in in their home a storybook and also uh, my name, uh, toys. toys as you know in 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 our society in our community many parents not aware with the toys for the kid they uh, this is the common yeah 
This is the common. Pada umumnya, my, my research found that the 65% uh, of the parent don't, don't, uh, don't give uh, the, teacher, the, the kid books, storybook and uh, toys, educational toys. Many our children, uh, they play in uh, uh, in 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 the back, the, the the yard 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 di kita tuh halaman rumah also in the halaman tetangga begitu ya yeah. neighbor yard from neighbor neighbor yard yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> main layangan uh, playing uh, apa namanya kit ya apa tuh yes kit ya yeah. yeah. itu Uh, it had to uh, uh, give time for for our kid. Jadi jangan semua waktu hanya untuk play with the ICT, with the gadget, with the laptop. Ya, yeah, maybe uh, uh, play with the laptop only one one uh, 20 minute or 30 minute or 15 minute. Ya, yeah, and after that please that our kid go to playground. Halaman rumah, halaman tetangga, ya, yeah, to play together with their peer or with their family, with hand-on activity. Dari mana orang tua tahu? This is the collaboration, ngobrol, chatting with the parent, with the teachers. Teacher harus tahu how to balancing environment uh, learning in situa in this situation. Ya, yeah. pre-play harus sampai primary school. Is there yeah, any tadi, specific time? Actually, how many hours that parents have to make sure that out, the the children have the right uh, the right time to play outside? Is I mean, uh, uh, we have to set up the schedule for the our kid like. How, how many hour uh, they can play with uh, pre play with the with the group uh, like one hours two hour in the in the afternoon yeah before maghrib begitu yeah yeah before maghrib they can they can play they can uh, big uh, apa naik uh, cycle big cycle yeah playing with a uh, big cycle uh, it is the gross motor is very good to develop and grow also can they can uh, 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 apa, uh, get the uh, language the new word if they intensive interactive with their uh, peer so how the teach, the, the parent can set up a schedule it is not rigid again Uh, back to uh, the children need and interest. So the key, how to parent role, collaboration with the teacher to get uh, children uh, uh, development and growth, even to get uh, knowledge about the uh, 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 mata, mata pelajaran, yeah? like maths, uh, bahasa, on others I think that's all okay thank you so much that was very informative maybe uh, Dr. Kanita oh no do you want to uh, answer this question <laughs> the unmute mode okay yeah uh -huh. for my answer balancing the system yes for the student to be a uh, new normal is that right Yeah, is that right? <laughs> yes. New normal era. Balancing a system for new normal. New normal in in everyday life. Like how many percent for new normal? Like they have do we have to prepare or planning? Like if you are if you are the parents, you should be 70% prepared and let them do only 20 and after that you and them can do more 10 so 
70 percent or 60 percent that parents balance that have to plan get ready for them everything ICT game everything food or something everything that you want them to learn at home uh, among brother sister father mother grandpa grandma or something like that so 70 percent mama have to prepare and after that do more 20 do 20 that uh, let the early childhood uh, small children do more do thing that you have planned like they want to do some cooking. Cooking is COVID situation or not? Yes, have to be clean. Everything should be clean. When you cook, you have to put the mask. You don't have to speak when you're cooking. That is the life for the cooker. This is the thing that you can let them understand. So they can cook. They can help you cooking. That is the thing that Parents have to plan about 70. Uh, like you have to buy, you have to plan activities. And after that, after finish the activity, you might have, the parent might have like 10 minutes or 20 minutes at home before go to bed. What they done, they, what they have done today. And they will know. A balancing system during COVID. Uh, one one question is uh, cleaning, social distancing, or physical distancing, or what's that? You have to uh, thermometer, thermometer, and have to remember what temperature you have, thirty six or thirty seven. So the kid have to remember the number, the number 36, 36.5 this morning. What happened? Is that good? If it's good, the kid will understand that is the good situation for them to stay in the social distancing and physical distancing and mass or even What's that? Fetch you. Do you use fetch you? Fetch you in, in Indonesia? Khalifa. Khalifa? Yes. You use fetch you yeah. in Indonesia? Yes, we use. Okay. <laughs> but no. right now I'm not using it. <laughs> no, because we are diff we are different place. So this is the thing that we can uh, balancing system for dealing COVID because I don't know how how strong COVID in your country, but in my country, we have to plan for the second time. So this is the thing. We have to teach and let them balance themselves, balance system themselves. After we balance system in the family, by especially as example cooking we are we doing cooking together how clean when we do cooking we have to uh, distancing something so the parent can make balancing system and prepare about for myself i think almost 60 to 70 and 20 is for uh, working together and before go to bed let them percent to ask what is good enough for covid or new normal i think new normal will make the the kid uh life skill better have a life skill better okay ka this this is my answer is that okay yes. yeah okay okay I, yeah, actually we have <laughs> actually lots of the questions, but 
in still uh, in the Q&A box, but unfortunately we have run <laughs> out of time. Thank you again, Dr. Sylvia and Dr. Kanita for sharing with us lots of the information and lots of the new knowledge that can gain from you. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. But um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to uh, answer again right now. Uh, I'm sorry that we cannot answer all of the questions directly to using uh, this live mode, but maybe uh, like this one, Dr. Zureda has already answered several questions that address to her directly from the Q&A box. Okay, right. And um, yeah, maybe this is uh, the last one, maybe. Uh, the spotlight. Mm -hmm. Okay, right now, uh -huh. thank you again uh, for Prof. Mariani, Dr. Zuraida, Dr. Sovia, and Dr. Kanita for sharing with us today because uh, this is uh, like a very informative talk today. And um, right now, ladies and gentlemen, we have to go to the, uh, the end of the session. I would like to invite Dr. Bambang Budiwana as the Dean of Faculty of Education, Universitas Negeri Malang, to give a closing remarks uh, and to close this uh, conference today. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Bu Silvi. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Honorable Rektor Universitas Negeri Malang, Bapak Ahmad Rafidin, Honorable Vice Deans, Head of the Primary and Early Childhood Education Departments, and the other officials in Universitas Negeri Malang, Honorable of all the keynote speakers, Honorable all the organizing committee for International Conference of Early Childhood and Primary Education, and the honorable of all the participants and presenters. The series of activities of the International Conference on Early Childhood and Primary Education, or ECBE, helped by the primary and early childhood education department this time as a routine annual agenda. In the second year, the team for EZBS shaping a better future for young generations, innovation in early childhood and primary education and new normal era. It is a very suitable team to answer the problems recently experienced by teachers in elementary school and early childhood education needs. The ECB International Conference aimed to discuss issues related to education and a pandemic situation. There are many issues and ideas in education that are presented by the keynote speakers. The hope is the idea can be disseminated to be used to achieve the agreed educational goals or to improve the quality of education. Another objective that is no less important than this activity is production of substantive recommendation to shift as a basis for implementing quality-oriented education without under undermining health methods. In the end, I would like to thank all the keynote speakers. Ibu Dr. Sofia Hartati from Universitas Negeri Jakarta. Ibu Associate Professor Kanita Nicharinko from Queen of Songkla University, Thailand. Ibu Prof. Dr. Marini M. Dinur from University of Malaya, Malaysia. And Ibu Dr. Zuraida Binti Musa from Sultan Hassanah Polsia Institute of Education, Brunei Darussalam, that supports this conference. And the participants who have participated well in 
And I also thank Supercell for the committee who have who have worked much to hold this activity. We hope all of you enjoy. We hope this webinar is useful for all. At this time of serious public health concerns, we truly are all in this together as we navigate our way forward. And I wish you are always healthy and have a very meaningful webinar. By saying Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, I officially close the ECBE International Conference. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bambang Budiwiono, as the Dean of Faculty of Education. Thank you again, Dr. Sofia and Dr. Associate Professor Dr. Kanitani Charunku from Thailand. Uh, I hope that we have lots of the knowledge uh, that have been sharing to us. Okay, well, now we are in the end of this webinar session, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. May I say thank you again for joining this webinar and have us sharing all of with us. I hope you enjoy the program and gain lots of the new information today. Well, I would like to give some information actually for presenters only. You can use this link again. Just please make sure that you can join this uh, Zoom again in uh, 12.30 uh, to present your presentation in a parallel session. Yeah, I think that's enough. Okay, but thank you again for joining us in Early Childhood Edu International Conference. Wassalamualaikum and good afternoon. Have a good day. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Bambang, this is the flower from okay. the from the, <laughs> the flower from Dr. Karita. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you again, all of the thank participants. You. <laughs> <That's it. laughs>